Lord God, we praise your name indeed. You are Lord of all. And we celebrate you this day. We thank you, God, for the gift of choices. The gift of choosing what we think is important in life. And the gift and the responsibility of choosing whether or not to follow after you. Bless us, God, this day. Touch our hearts. Touch them with your glory and with your power. In Christ we pray. Amen. I won't tell you what year it was, but it was a long time ago when I graduated high school. And I remember the excitement and a little bit of anticipation as I headed off to college for the very first time. And um, I, I thought I was going to be a physical therapist. I, I knew I wanted to help people in some ways. They didn't tell me how much science and math you had to do to be a physical therapist. Um, so I, I chose to apply to VCU, and I don't even remember what other schools, but I was excited because VCU was my first choice. And a, a strange thing was happening at home, being the daughter of a United Methodist minister, as I graduated high school, my parents were moving to the eastern shore. And so when I went home, it wasn't my home anymore. And when I went home to my parents, my friends weren't there anymore. So it was just a weird transition time in my life. And um, having grown up in a faithful Christian home was a tremendous blessing. One that I can never repay, one that I will never forget. Um, but I think I was probably just a little bit overprotected from things of the world. Maurice says, it says I'm still very protected. I live in a very protected, sheltered world. And I think God thinks that's best uh, for my life. Um, but I remember going off to college and all of a sudden, things that had been decided for me were now my choice. I could even choose whether I went to class or not. I could choose what I wanted to eat, what time I wanted to go to bed, what I wanted to study, what I wanted to do, if I wanted to go to church or not go to church. And I thought all those things were really important things to do or not to do. And um, I made some choices. And I, I tried, I thought I was trying my best. And, um, and of course, going to VCU, if you were a physical therapy major or so you thought, the sciences and the... Uh, math were loaded on. This is not a scientific or mathematic mind. <laughs> I guess you noticed that. <laughs> I had a really difficult time that first year and uh, ended up uh, not having a real successful year. But I remember one of the things that I wasn't as successful in either was my choice over pursuing fellowship with other Christians or not. And for me, that had always been automatic, but now I was having to make choices to go and seek those things out. And sometimes I chose to, and sometimes I chose not to. And I remember, after that first year of school, um, I was put on academic probation, because I didn't know how to do science or math, and I played a lot. But after that first year, I remember my dad setting me aside, and he looked at me, and I was miserable. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, but I was totally miserable. And you know what was missing? It wasn't the um, math and science homework that got me down. It was the lack of Christian fellowship that made my life so very difficult. And I didn't even know it was happening. Isn't it easy to fall away from God? And sometimes we don't even know it's happening because we start going down a certain path and things happen that make that path very attractive and very easy. And before you know it, you've really gotten off track of your journey of faith. And that's exactly what happened to me. And I didn't even know it until my dad looked at me and he said, Michelle, you've lost your joy. And at first I said, what are you talking about, Dad? And then I began to think about it and I began to realize that it wasn't being away from home or when I went home that my friends weren't there. It wasn't all the math and science homework. It wasn't the choices that I had to make over what things I would consume or not consume. It was the choice of not pursuing faithfulness the way that I always had before that had made my life so difficult. In Joshua chapter 24, it says this, now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. 
Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable for you, then choose yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites whose land you are now living in. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We've been talking about, in confirmation class, the creation, and that part of God's great creation was creating us in His image. And being in the image of God, we have the ability to choose. And we have the capability to choose right, and we have the capability to choose go wrong. And we have the capability to choose God as Lord of our life, or we have the capability to allow other things to become God of our lives. <coughs> the Israelites struggled with this all throughout their history. That's why Jesus ended up having to come. Because they struggled with the pressure, the ability, the responsibility of making choices. And like all of us, they succeeded sometimes, but they failed miserably other times. And so at this point in their history, where they meet with Elisha, and they have the opportunity to choose, they still don't know the answers. And they need proof. What about you? Have you found the answers? Do you need proof? Then let me offer some. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever should believe in him would have life everlasting. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us. We thank you for the ability to choose. And we ask you, God, to forgive us when we've fallen off of your path, sometimes so innocently. It began with one simple little decision that just got bigger and bigger and farther and farther off of track. Forgive us, God, and remind us of how you convince the world of your great love. Remind us as we remember the body of Jesus broken, as we remember the blood of Jesus spilt. Remind us and give us the ability and the faithfulness to choose you. Thank you. Amen. On the night in which Jesus met with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to them and he said, Eat from this, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it in remembrance of me. After the supper, Jesus took the cup he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this cup, and as often as you drink of, as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out your Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they truly might be for us the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ, sacrificed that we might have life and life abundant and that we might know forgiveness of sins. And bless us as we take this blood, this sign of redemption, the sign of your forgiveness of new covenant, one on one through Jesus Christ, we have access to you, Almighty God. Whatever we drink of this cup, let us drink it in remembrance of you. So pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they might be for us body and blood, broken and spilt. Thank you. God, we are so, so grateful for the things that you've done in our lives. and Our hearts are filled with sadness today and with joy. And God, we know that every day we can find things that will make us sad. And every day we can find things that will bring us joy. And today, we remember with sadness our friend Wilfred. We weren't ready to let go of him yet, Lord. 
And so, along with his family and his very dear friends, we remember and we give you thanks for his life, and we ask your special blessings upon those who loved him dearest, that you might guide them, that you might direct their paths, especially in these days of decision-making and of extreme grief. Bless them, Almighty God. God, we also ask your blessing upon those who are needing um, prayers for healing, who need a mighty touch from you, for those who grieve, for those who need healing, for those who just need to know that you are God all by yourself. Hear our prayers for these as we lift them before your throne. Share Brady. My mom. Thank you, God, for these special ones in our lives. Work their miracles according to your purposes for their lives. Thank you, God. We praise you. We thank you. Now, as we gather around table as in church, let the power of God fall upon us through these gifts of bread and wine that we may truly be your servants, empowered by your spirit, encouraged and embraced by your love. Thank you, God, for this celebration. We give you thanks. And now, with all of those throughout the thousands of years who have known Jesus Christ, we gather, we give thanks and praise, and we pray together in his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many, break the bread and remember and celebrate the one Lord Jesus Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, these are the good gifts of God for us, the people of God. Together now, let us keep the